Is it actually falling? Is it ever going to fall? Most likely it would not return here. Cheers. You see the tower and you have all this build up of excitement and everything. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to Pisa, a wonderful city in the heart of Tuscany that is so incredibly famous. Probably you know why, because obviously it's home to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, one of the most important and most known symbols of Italy. However, I want to show you a very different Pisa because there are so many other places to see here and so many other places to visit and many, many hidden gems that I want to show you and to explore together with you. So if you're ready, guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button down below. And after you do it, we can begin. Pisa used to be an important Etruscan port and in the Middle Ages it became a powerful marine republic, even founding its colonies in the northern Africa, Spain, Asia and the Middle East after a successful crusade. The same period was also important in the artistic field before the neighboring republics of Genoa and Florence started gradually taking over the dominion in the region. This part of Pisa, guys, actually reminds me of Florence a lot. If you've been to Florence, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you've ever taken a stroll along the Arno River and seen all these different houses here, it's equally as stunning because you can see all these cute houses over there and they're actually all lined up with different uh, bars and restaurants and cafes. So it actually makes for a perfect place for a riverside walk during the day and aperitivo at night or in the evening. By the way, guys, if you haven't been to Florence and you don't know what I'm talking about, I will leave you a link up here to my Florence playlist. But in the meantime, I can totally tell you that if you want uh, a little bit, you know, less crowded space, but still want to enjoy this kind of ambience, you can absolutely come to Pisa, especially if you've been to Florence previously. Pisa should be your next destination in Tuscany. Speaking of aperitivo, guys, uh, I've chosen a very peculiar place. I actually chosen a cafe that's been here since 1775. And you can have aperitivo in a place like this with a beautiful view, enjoying your Aperol Spritz or Hugo Spritz or whatever drink you prefer. And honestly, the atmosphere here is absolutely fantastic because you have this incredible view. Can you see these houses, by the way, over there? They're absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, enjoy your drink, enjoy this place. I love it so much. Cheers! Guys, if you want even more tips uh, on traveling to Italy, make sure to subscribe to my Patreon page. I will leave you a link in the description box. There I post weekly travel tips, itineraries, best deals, and the best ideas for your holiday in Italy. So make sure to check it out and I'll be happy to welcome you there. Guys, we didn't film the lunch because we're always on a schedule. However, we had some lovely pizza and I will leave you a place where you can have pizza in a very nice ambiance where you can enjoy your lunch calmly, even though there are lots of tourists here in Pisa today and the prices were actually so, so good. So check the description box for all the places that I'm visiting as always and the pizza place as well. This piazza, guys, is one of the many hidden gems of Pisa and I highly recommend you to visit it because it's absolutely beautiful. But also, there is this place that is located here and that is so, so peculiar for the entire country, actually. This building behind my back is the seat of Scuola Normale Superiore, which is a public university and it translates as the uh, normal superior school, but it is actually a public university, a very exclusive one to be precise. Currently, there are around 600 students here studying uh, at the undergraduate level or postgraduate in the PhD. It is pretty difficult to get here. It is very, very famous in Italy. And it was established by Napoleon as a branch of the Paris Ecole Normale Superiore which is another very exclusive school in Paris.
and in fact there are so many students here today but during the day obviously you will see students just walking around going to the classes or exams i actually don't know if they follow the same schedule as uh, we do at the university of bologna we did sorry uh, but anyway in the evening it is sad that this piazza resembles somewhat Piazza Verdi in Bologna because it's a place where students and young people from all around the city get together and gather to play music and relax and socialize, get to know each other. And I can totally imagine it. Can you imagine a piazza like this, full of people and bustling in the evening? I wish we stayed here a bit later today, but we can't anyway. You know guys, turn on your imagination. And there is another legend linked to this building here. Well, obviously the school is legendary, but it's not a legend. Anyway, I have a legend to tell you about this building. This urban legend was even mentioned by Dante in his Divine Comedy when he placed a certain Conte Ugalino in hell because he was a traitor. And the legend said that Conte Ugolino was imprisoned here in this building together with his family and even practiced cannibalism at a certain point of his imprisonment because he obviously went absolutely crazy. Anyway, guys, you know, I cannot resist a really cool legend, even if it's a somewhat dark legend, as here it's so windy here that I don't know. Anyway, uh, this place is actually another landmark of Pisa, and not many people know about it because every single tourist arriving here will go to the Tower of Pisa, but not everyone will know that there is this amazing piazza hidden right behind the main street. By the way, guys, if you want to learn about even more amazing places in Pisa, even more hidden places here, do not miss my short videos that will be up the whole week and they will all be dedicated to this amazing city. The last time I came here was maybe like 10 years ago. So I was maybe like 17 back then. And I remember that the whole uh, road leading up to the tower was filled with vendors selling you souvenirs, but you know, like not the authentic souvenirs or stuff, but like this really cheap and low quality souvenirs that if you know me guys, you know that I hate them. And I actually can see that it's not the case anymore. And it makes me pretty happy about it because this street is really cute. And you know, it's, you just, you, you go there and you see the tower and you have all this build up of excitement and everything. And having this street lined with these cheap souvenirs would be an absolute mood ruiner. However, however, guys, I saw a little sign over here that says that the city of Pisa has been fighting the unauthorized commerce and it is actually now prohibited to sell anything here if it's not authorized by the authorities. And yeah, well, I think this is absolutely the way to, to find this you know, not very pleasant side of uh, touristic cities. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Here is a little reality check for you guys. Every tourist season, every summer, each and every Italian city turns into a huge building ground. I don't know why. I still can't understand why it's happening, even after eight years of living here. And I know that many of you have messaged me telling me that it's true for the cities where you are as well. This is the reality, expectation versus reality, if you want. But just, you know, know that this is a part of the Italian culture for now. So if you go somewhere in Italy during summer, be ready to see this and do not be dismayed. Know that amazing monuments are awaiting for you right in front, literally. We are two steps away from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So. Guys, the weather is crazy today. When we arrived here, it was pouring. Then it's sunny and then the next moment it's cloudy and about to rain again. It's been absolutely crazy. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably be updated on everything in real time because I post all the behind the scenes and updates. And well, you'll be the first ones to know 
all about my trips and my travel plans. So if you don't follow me there yet, go follow me now, check it out and be the first ones to know everything. Here we are guys, the most famous monument of this city. Do you think I'm talking about the Leaning Tower? No, I'm talking about all the people posing for the iconic photo of them supporting the tower. Believe me or not, but I think at least 99% of tourists coming here will take a picture like this with a very high probability. But what about the tower itself? Is it actually falling? Is it ever going to fall? If you have so many questions about it, I have the answer. So come with me and I'll tell you everything. The Leaning Tower of Pisa actually celebrates its 850th birthday in 2023 because the construction began in 1173 and lasted for over 200 years. Can you imagine, guys? Actually, the reason behind that is that the tower began leaning or actually falling right away as it was constructed because of the very particular soil beneath it. On the south side of the tower, the soil is very clay, which makes it prone to falling and leaning, and it doesn't really support the weight of the tower. The tower was leaning more and more over the centuries before finally in the 20th century, the risk of falling became quite real. That's when the restoration work started. To prevent the tower from falling, it's been restored over the years. And good news, actually over the past 30 years, it has straightened itself by 40 centimeters. So it is very unlikely, according to the scientists, that it will ever going to fall. This piazza is so peculiar because there are several monuments that you can see here. Besides the Leaning Tower, there is the Cathedral of Pisa and the Baptistry, and also a monumental cemetery that used to be resting place for the noble people of the city and for uh, you know important citizens of Pisa and it is actually sad that these monuments represent the whole cycle of life with the baptistry representing birth and the cathedral representing life itself and cemetery obviously representing death I love the symbolism about this piazza so hard to imagine it right now with this crazy amount of people here but once this place which used to be called the Piazza del Duomo was renamed into Piazza dei Miracoli the square of miracles honestly I am really struggling now to imagine a miracle that could have happened here to make it a viable place because there are so many people it's really is impossible to walk here Still, you obviously have to visit it when you're in Italy. It's absolutely iconic. If you Google Italy and look at the images, I bet that the first thing you will see would probably be the Colosseum and the second will be the Leaning Tower of Pisa, followed probably by pizza and pasta because these are the symbols of Italy. Whenever you say Italy, this would be something that you think about. And I think that something probably should be done to somehow organize these crowds of people because it's so chaotic here and it's really difficult to enjoy the scenery because the, the place is really beautiful but you know um, I personally don't like these crowds of people however you obviously have to visit it guys it's absolutely iconic symbolic and yeah should be on your itinerary should be on your bucket list for Italy even though I would probably see it just once and most likely would not return here If you turn around the corner and stop at the side of the cathedral that is facing the cemetery, you can find this sign and the legend says that the devil tried to ruin this cathedral and the square itself because he was envious of its beauty, but he ended up only scratching the wall of the cathedral and that this scratch is actually uh, was, was left here by his nail. And another legend says that you can never count the amount of uh, little holes here, that every time you count them, you will end up with a different number. And that's it guys, I hope that you enjoy this video. Um, honestly, I have such mixed feeling about Pisa because I really enjoyed today and I really enjoyed the city. 
I can say the same about this area, the square of the miracles, maybe because it was just too crowded for my taste. But as I said before, it is obviously so iconic. You have to visit it at least once. But honestly, if you want my honest opinion, I would highly recommend you to visit Pisa. Maybe, yes, come here and see this iconic piazza for yourselves. But then enjoy the rest of the city, enjoy all the hidden gems. There are so many of them and it is absolutely lovely, even on a windy day like today. And there are so many things to see here. There are so many museums that we didn't get to visit today, but you can absolutely visit them all and, you know, just uh, see the city beyond its most famous touristic landmark and its most famous monument. There's so much more to each virtually each Italian city than just the most famous monuments there. And having said that, guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell button down below so you don't miss any new travel vlog. We have a lot of absolutely spectacular travel vlogs in store for you for this summer. So yeah, join our lovely travel family. And as always, like, comment and share this video with your friends so I can make even more videos like this. Thank you so much for being here and please enjoy your day.